Back at the Orange Bowl, and ready for the Hurricanes against Florida State. John Dockery is with us. He was down at the locker rooms for the pregame talk. But let's go down to John. Thank you, Brent. I was in the locker room, as you said. And the Seminoles are like guided missiles looking for a target. Bobby Bowden told them three things, basically. He said, don't be out hit. If you don't want to be, you won't be. He said, don't lose your poise if something goes wrong early. Perhaps most importantly, he reminded the team that Pablo Lopez's mother was here in the stands. Of course, Pablo Lopez, their teammate who died six weeks ago in that tragic accident. So the Seminoles, quietly intense, they're ready for their battle with the Hurricanes. Get just about ready to go. Now back up to you, Brent. All right, John, and there we see Mark Selig, number three, to kick it off for the number one ranked team in the country with Keith Ross and Derek Carter deep. Into the corner of the end zone and on out. Era, that's exactly the spot where the Hurricanes buried Oklahoma a few weeks ago. Looks like there was a flag down. This is the offense Florida State will come in with. Herb Gaynor is the split in. He is the big play man. Darren Holloman is the flanker. Watch him for an end around this afternoon. Pat Carter, the tight end, is number 85. Bobby Bowden likes him a lot, and he'll use him this afternoon. Sammy Smith's the tailback. He's number 33. He is alongside number 30, Tanner Holloman. And the young man who will quarterback the Seminoles today, Danny McManus, number 14. He has guided his team to three straight wins. Throw on first down, complete to Carter, the tight end. Well executed bootleg pass in a sense. He faked to the field that time, Brent, brought his tight end across from the left side, and he was wide open. Watch the tight end on your left. He fakes the sweep to the left. Now look at the tight end, Carter, number 85, wide open in the seam, right there. And 36, one of the big hitters in that secondary, which is Bain, makes a great, I mean... <laughs> Blades makes a great play. That's a 20-yard game. First and 10. Rolling to the left. McManus dropping again for his tight end, Carter. And he has another eight yards before middle linebacker George Myra drops off and brings Carter down. Let's take a look at this offensive line and their job today is a big one. Ayanata is on the left side. Next to him at guard is Kuypers, number 62. The center, Jimmy Hindley, he'll have his hands full. Mark Salva on the right side. And Pat Tomberlin, over 300 pounds this afternoon. Second and two, and they've thrown wide open to Sammy Smith. First down to the 31, there is a penalty flag down. However, hold on, it's a 20-yard gain, and there is a penalty marker down with Smith stretched out near the 30-yard line. He is hurt. So the game stands. McManus does a beautiful job faking the trap right there to Holloman and delivering to Sammy Smith coming right out of the backfield. Well-executed play. That could hurt them, Brent, because Floyd is already out. They're running back, and Smith just went down. So far, McManus has put it up on every play. This one to the running back releasing, and they will go, Era, to a sophomore, Keith Ross, number 20. He will be a tailback. Sammy Smith is still down on the ground. He is their ballyhooed freshman tailback. Now he is up being assisted toward the sideline. Era, how about this Hurricane defense? Well, it's been a remarkable defense. They've had 26 sacks, the front four, Bill Hawkins at the right defensive end, and at, le at the right tackle, Jerome Brown of 4'8", 40, at 285 pounds. Dan Cilio steps in for injured Derwin Jones and a big guy, and Dan Stubbs, a sack man. He's already had 12. But they have lost Sammy Smith, and Ross... 20 is in the backfield along with Holloman. Florida State has not run yet. And they come with Cross. No gain. The heart of that hurricane defense there to stand him up. And again, George Myra Jr., number 45, makes the stop. Strong side linebacker Winston Moss. He'll be over the tight end all day. 
George Meyer, a great competitor, the middle linebacker, and Rod Connor Carter, the weak backer. And this is a great secondary they have. They have a couple of injuries. Bubba McDowell will start at the left corner. Kevin McCutcheon at the strong safety. Benny Blades, a great one at the free safety. And Tolbert Bain rounds out that secondary. They have five in there now on this second and eight. McManus takes a deep drop. Incomplete. And the ball should have been caught. That was Darren Holloman who didn't hold on out here. The right side of the offense. McManus took an extra deep drop at time. The offensive line gave yeah, him enough time. Blitz on right here. He curls right there. But look at the blitz in the inside. They beat it. But unfortunately, he doesn't hang on to the ball. Man-to-man -man coverage underneath. You see, he, Holloman, Darren turns right there, but does not hold on to the ball. Era, Bubba McDowell was playing him very soft. He had backed off. Third and eight. And they run Ross. And Ross battles his way close to a first down. Beautiful call. Bobby Bowden said he wants to run the ball, went on passing downs, and passed the ball on running downs. There was a great example. They call him in what we call double zone running the coverage. Carter makes a great block right there on Myra number 45. And of course, Lewis, I mean, uh, Keith Ross picks up the first down. The ball is at the 20-yard line after a 10-yard run. Now they split the backs. This is the first time they've shown a set other than the eye. They keep him back to block. McManus almost intercepted down there on the two-yard line. Benny Blades had the ball in and out of his hands, and he should have held on. Well, McManus thus far has certainly impressed me, Brent. Uh, he has rejuvenated this Seminole team. You see Jimmy Johnson right there concerned, obviously, because of the way these Seminoles are moving that football. This ball was just overthrown right there. Blades had it right in his hands, but could not hang on. This is another passing situation, and already McManus is 3 of 5 for 48 yards. Split backs again. to the five with Benny Blades, 36 in hot pursuit. That was a tremendous call, Era. A great the call. defense and... like me, we thought they'd come up Troy. Perfect call on the play. Keith Ross has really impressed me. Number 20 stepping in there. He's the third spring running back. You see it from a end zone shot. Just hands the ball on a little trap play and watch him cut clear back across the green and avoid the tra tacklers. I haven't seen anyone do this to the Miami defense in quite a while. They have put the Canes on the run here. First and goal at the six. Here's straight ahead with the fullback, Holloman for the touchdown. concerned well executed drive both passing and running great calls Derek Schmidt will attempt the extra point the holder is McManus Schmidt's a good kicker and you'll need one here this afternoon he puts the seventh point up on the board they drive 80 yards in nine plays are a from the end zone, watch him cut back and look at the daylight over the left side. Right there. You see 54 Hawkins is playing the quarterback. They didn't even have to block him. They finessed him. And Tanner Holloman scores before Benny Testaverde has touched the ball. But it's Testaverde's turn and we'll be back. A man can spend years paying off an insurance policy and never reap its benefits. Well, guess it's time to go. We're gonna miss you, Grandma. That's why the Equitable created Incentive Life. It lets you invest in a fund that's averaged 14.3% over the past 10 years. So a man will have something to enjoy. Are you coming, Grandma? Yes. While there's still time for him to enjoy it. Incentive Life from the Equitable. Do you ever notice how sometimes with unleaded regular gasoline, even your new car can feel like an old clunker? All that knocking and pinging can wither your youthful enthusiasm quickly. But there is a gasoline that can prevent all that. Super 76. 
a premium unleaded. Fill her up, Sonny. It's got the kind of high-octane performance that can help prevent cars from aging prematurely. Fill her up with spirit. Super 76 unleaded. The spirit of 76. Tomorrow, two teams with thriving playoff hopes and their toughest obstacle is each other. The Cowboys combat the Giants and it all starts with the NFL Today on CBS Sports. Bobby Bowden with a seven-point lead. This morning he got up and said to his wife, Ann, Ann, I can't remember ever being a 14-point underdog at Florida State. And dear, I'll tell you something. We are going to win this football game. That's a coach who knew something, Eric. <laughs> well, he's got to wait till Vinny Testaverde gets his hands on the ball. Schmidt with the kickoff, and it'll go to a short man. We will take you down to Houston. Season premiere of the NBA on CBS. The Los Angeles Lakers and the Houston Rockets. We'll tell you more about that game as the afternoon unfolds. Now it is first and ten for Tester Hurdy. The report from the bench. We see that the Seminoles go 80 yards in nine plays. 243. Holloman with the touchdown. Tester up with first down. They'll come from the I formation. He'll throw on first down. Great time. Sideline complete. And he goes to a tight end with Greg Newell getting Charles Henry out of bounds on first down. These are great skilled people that Miami has. Brett Perriman starts at that split end spot. Great jumper. Michael Irvin, the big play man, already has 17 touchdown passes, career touchdown passes. Charles Henry, who you saw catch the ball. Warren Williams at the left half. Alonzo Highsmith at fullback. And Vinny Testaverde, Mr. Everything. And Mr. Everything hands it off that time to Williams. And Williams gets the first down before Newell, the free safety, again makes the stop. So on two plays, the Hurricanes here are forcing the secondary to come up with the tackles. Gary Stevens, the offensive coordinator, said that they did want to establish a running game here, and they certainly do, as number 38 McGowan overplays at the linebacker, ran by it. They didn't have to block it. Irvin goes to a slot. Perriman is outside of him. Heisman cuts back. Spins off the tackle, gets to the 49. And again, they're up, they're getting past the defensive line and the linebackers. That was an 11-yard gain by Highsmith. And also an excellent job of running by Alonzo Highsmith. The pros say he's the best in the nation at that spot. Now watch him shake some tacklers. He cuts back, keeps great balance. There's a good shot right there, but he avoids that one, spins off, bleeds 11 yards out of that play. First and ten. Incomplete. Urban on the far side had it go through his hands and on out of bounds. Okay, the offensive line of the Hurricanes has been decimated by injury. Maurice Maddox will step in there for injured John O'Neill at the left tackle. Dave Alekna, very bright, intelligent at left guard. Rakosi, a fine center with great experience, quick feet for big guy. Paul O'Connor, the best pass blocker in that line. And Scott Proben stepping in for injured Davis and Patchen. Passing situation for the Heisman Trophy favorite. Hits Irvin that time. The same pattern on the far sideline. And Sanders, number two, was the defensive back who took him out of bounds. Well, this is the defense working right now for Bobby Bowden. This is a young defensive line, and you will recognize perhaps only one name. That's the nose guard. He's improving. There he is, Gerald Nichols. He was in on that seven-sack attack in Tallahassee last year. Didn't help. Felton Hayes, one of the backers. Fred Jones is a good one, and so too is Paul McGowan. But so far, they've been kept out of the tackles here. It is third and two. And Highsmith batters straight on first down and Fred Jones 55 brings him down. Era looks like we could have a high 
high-scoring, freewheeling affair. Sure it looks like it. Watch Greg Ricosi right there. The center make a great block. Right here in the center spot right there. Greg Ricosi is the center. Watch him make a nice block here. Turns the nose man harp out of there. Releases off of that and blocks number 38, the great linebacker McGowan. The Hurricanes have moved to the Seminoles 36. Mr. Verde calling the play at the line of scrimmage. Deep drop. Complete. Found his tight end and he's out of bounds inside the 15. Charles Henry pushed out by Newell. Good call by Testaverde at the line of scrimmage. That's a 21-yard gain. Testaverde to Henry. Great play here. You watch the tight end, Henry. He'll slow block in here and then break out into the seam. Perfect throw by Testaverde. He releases off right there, breaks to the outside. He's right in the seam, and Testaverde puts it right there. Beautiful throw, well-executed play. Williams and Highsmith continue to be the running backs. Highsmith straight ahead to the five-yard line. Newell and Williams, two defensive backs for Bobby Bowden, make the tackle. And the Canes are pouring through the front seven. Great job on the inside. Watch the blocking up front. They're handling Harp, number 58, the nose man. 55, Jones is blocked. That offensive line, even though it's been hurt by injury, is doing a marvelous job. This close to the goal, Jimmy Johnson employs two tight ends, and Urban comes in on a wing. Highsmith up over the top, close to the three-yard line, where it will be second and goal for the Canes. Bobby Bowden said he wanted to swap touchdowns and field goals with him. He wanted to score the touchdown and hold them to a field goal. He'll be hard-pressed to do that against this outfit. They're really a great offensive football team. Here at the Orange Bowl in Miami, along with Eric Parsegan, John Dockery, I'm Brent Musburger. Florida State scored first. Miami's opening possession. They have driven down inside the five. And the Seminoles must stop them there as Williams slipped. And the free safety, Greg Newell, has been extremely active. Number 40. He's been in on a half a dozen tackles. You see that low on the back of that helmet. That is a tribute to Pablo Lopez, who was tragically shot to death over in Tallahassee some six weeks ago. This is a run-action pass situation, third down. They like to flood the right side. Not going to run it. For the flag, touchdown, Williams. in for the touchdown. So the Hurricanes and the Seminoles are all even, and each coach is looking for some defense.
passion to razor sharp perfection. We're looking for a few good men with a medal to be Marines. Who says you can't have 100% imported hops? No less filling beer. Old world aging. And a less filling beer. Smooth, super premium taste. And a less filling beer. Make a vote light. The best of both worlds. Make a vote light. Oh, yes, you can. Have it all. Well, there we see Sammy Smith, the tailback for Florida State. He was injured. On the first series, he caught a pass releasing for the backfield, sprained shoulder, and from that view, it does not appear that Smith will be returning here this afternoon. So Bobby Bowden is shorthanded. Victor Floyd, he was the starter at tailback. He comes in banged up. And the burden falls on Keith Ross, the sophomore from Newberry, Florida, number 20. He also is one of the deep men to return this kickoff. Charges out to the 20-yard line. Here's our lineup of NFL games on CBS tomorrow. Dandy with the Dallas Cowboys and the New York Giants. We'll be taking a look at that one on the NFL today. The Niners play New Orleans. Atlanta goes against New England. That is going to be a tough game. Philadelphia, St. Louis. Green Bay, Pittsburgh. Those are all early games. And then late, Minnesota plays Washington. The NFL today starts it all at 12.30 Eastern time on CBS. McManus brings the Seminoles to the line of scrimmage. Off a play fake. Wide open receiver. Complete again for McManus and another first down. Working against Tolbert Bain, who had dropped off on that zone. They come to the tight end for 17 yards. They can see everybody is going to be driven off here, and he comes wide open in the left flat. Tom O'Malley, number 92, will break out of the tight end spot, break into the flat right there, and he's wide open. First and ten for the Seminoles. Ball is at the 36. And Ross comes out to the 41-yard line before George Myra, 45, wraps him up. Brent, I think we've got to keep in mind that uh, the Hurricanes had two a week off. They haven't had contact for two weeks. I shouldn't say contact, but they haven't had a game condition. And uh, it might, might have taken them a series of downs or two to get started. What did Coach Johnson tell you about contact at practice? They did have a lot of contact. On Tuesday and Wednesday, they hit pretty good, he said, without the full tackling in the secondary. But still, it's not like playing in a game, and sometimes you have to get those bugs ironed out. Let's see what happens on this drive by the Seminoles. Second and six for the Seminoles. McManus avoids pressure. Deep down the middle, it'll be incomplete. Intended for Darren Holloman, and he was lucky to release the ball. He had pressure from the rear closing in, and that was big Danny Stubbs, number 96, one of the fiercest pass rushers that you and I have seen in college football this season. Now McManus coming back off the play fake. Here is Stubbs around the corner. Can't get back, and that big tackle, Pat Tomberlin, was able to run him off, and then he overthrew his man, and wisely, too, because there was double coverage. It's third down, and McManus with a deep drop, complete over the middle. Scott DeMurray, out of the Miami area, was the receiver. He just delayed along the line and waited for the clear out and then just broke underneath it and he was wide open. You'll see that Gaynor drives off. You see number one kind of hesitate will be in the right side of your screen and then comes underneath all of the zoning linebackers right there and catches the pass. What we have seen so far, Florida State has picked up a couple of weaknesses in this hurricane defense. They are moving the ball better than any team that I have seen against this club in a couple of years. Under pressure, incomplete. Going to his tight end, Tom O'Malley, and again, it was Mr. 
Mr. Stubbs in that backfield. He puts a lot of pressure on you, but the one thing about McManus, as Bobby Bowden said, he is not easy to sack. He's got a quick arm. He's not very big, about 5'11 at the most, but he's awful tough to sack because he senses the people around him, got a quick release, and get, gets rid of it before the rushers can get to him. play there Frank he read it well he had a little counter play but he was not fooled by it pursued brought him down beautifully watch Cilio at the right side here comes right off of his block right there pursued right down on Ross nice job George Myra batted the ball up in the air. McManus threw the ball low, and Myra was able to bat it away. And Florida State will punt. He had Gainer open coming from the right side here. Looks like he's going to scramble and run. Now he sees Gainer crossing away, and Myra jumps up and bats that ball down. And it's almost Barry. intercepted. Punting the ball to David Kintai. Kintai spins away. It's out beyond the 15-yard line. A 39-yard punt by Berry and an 8-yard Kintai run. And era. now the pressure will be on Florida State's defense when we come back. We're tied in the Orange Bowl. This is a cover story taking shape for Time magazine, but late-breaking news stops the presses. Time puts AT&T Skynet digital service into action. Via satellite, a new cover story is transmitted instantly, accurately, and rolls off the presses in under 24 hours. Let us show you how AT&T digital services can help your business. AT&T, the right choice. Hello, I'm Leona, your automatic teller. Can I help you with a student loan? No, a car loan, Leona. Fast forward. Home improvement loan. Hey. It's a General Motors car. Don't get hassled when you finance a new car or truck. Get GMAC financing only at your GM dealer. Uh, is there someone live I could talk with around Do we have one of our calendars? This is a fine calendar. We also have what they call a credit calendar. If I can only find it, only. Tonight on CBS, will Michael Nury save his kidnapped parolee before it's too late? I'm asking the questions here. Uh, okay, but how do we find out? You have got to do nothing. But watch downtown. Let's get out of the sideline, and here's John Dockery. John? Thank you, Brent. Yes, Sammy Smith uh, is along the sidelines. He's on the bench. His shoulder, right shoulder, is taped up. It's a strained shoulder. It's not separated. They said they'd see how he'd respond to see whether he's going to play or not again. So he's not out definitely, but it does look like he's going to be out for at least a few series. Now back to you, Brent. Thank you, John. Vinny Testaverde brings the Hurricanes up to the line of scrimmage. Highsmith and Williams are the running backs. Perriman and Irvin, the wide receivers. Williams, who scored the touchdown, breaks free and gets past the 25-yard line. Or Terry Warren, the outside linebacker, stops him there. Here they are pushing the Seminoles back off the line of scrimmage. Well, their, their uh, play calling is excellent, Brent, because the Seminoles there expect a lot of passing from Testaverde. They don't expect this team to run. And uh, they're coming out and making it appear like a formation that's going to be a pass, and then they're running the football successfully. Second and two. And again, this time, Highsmith will not get through a hole. Felton Hayes, 46, and 38, Paul McGowan are the two defensive players who come across and throw Miami for its first loss of the game. Here it is from ground level on the far side. Felton Hayes, number 46, comes in and makes a nice stop there, gets help, almost spins off of it. 
This will be third and two against Bobby Bowden's defense. Testaverde with that stand up, drops it to Henry over the middle for the first down. As easy as that. Big Benny Testaverde drops back, has great vision with that size of his, and catches the tight end coming off the line. Number two, eight, Charles Henry had arthroscopic surgery two weeks ago. Here he comes right across. There he is wide open. He just slow blocks and breaks across the middle. And Benny picks him up. They got a devastating passing attack. Gary Stevens has done a marvelous job with him. And for the first time in some time, Mel Bratton, number five, has checked in. Testa Verde passes to Irvin on the far sideline, working against Sanders. Just a quick out pattern. There is Mel Bratton there. Well, he's some kind of player, 6'1", 217. I mean, he just launches himself when he gets the ball. He was injured against West Virginia and was sent to the sideline. And today, they are bringing him back for the Hurricanes, second and six. Highsmith and Bratton are in the eye. First time he has carried the ball out to the 38, and Paul McGowan, 38, brings him down. McGowan's a leading tackler on this football team with 80 involvements coming into this game. Also a candidate for the Butkus Award. He's had a great season, number 38 there, 6'1", 226, and a junior. And Brian Blades, he too has missed action because of an injury. Now he checks in for the first time. So the Hurricane offense back at full strength except that tackle. Pusher and Testaverde is sacked. Coming through was Eric Hayes, number 78, a left defensive tackle out of Tampa, Florida. 6'3 and 283 pounds and just a freshman. Very tough to get to Vinny Testaverde. Number 78 right there really puts the heat on, brings him down and forces a punt. And they love the block punts. McGee snaps it perfectly to Fiegels, who gets it off. And Sanders lets it go over his head. And the Hurricanes will let that ball roll dead at the 16-yard line. It will not be good field position for Danny McManus. So both teams show a little defense. A 56-yard punt by Fiegels puts Florida State in the hole. We'll be right back. Orion Pictures presents something different. Wild thing, I think I love you. Wild thing. Something daring. You make my heart sing. Something dangerous. Melanie Griffith, Jeff Daniels. You make everything. Something wild. Rated R. Starts Friday, November 7th at a theater near you. Check papers for times. Hi, I'm Mr. Goodwrench. I was GM trained in Chicago. Hello, oh, Mr. Goodwrench. Got my GM training in Terrytown, New York. No matter where he lives. Phoenix, Arizona. Portland, Oregon. Mr. Goodwrench can get something not just any mechanic can get. GM training. Got my GM training in Oklahoma City. I was GM trained in Atlanta. GM has training schools all over America. Miami, Florida. Buffalo, New York. Memphis, Tennessee. So no matter where you are. Houston, Texas. No one knows your GM car better. No one. Kareem and the Lakers go out for revenge against the team that stunned them into playoff submission. The towering Rockets of Houston, the rematch on CBS Sports. Next. Uh, how did they get this sack on Testaverde? Here's Eric Hayes right now, and he runs his blocker, which is uh, Alekna, comes right around on a stunt, runs his blocker into the center. Watch this. Harry Kay's a freshman. They get a little stun in there, and he wipes right off and gets right into the secondary clean right there and makes the sack. And there was good coverage about six yards downfield. Testa Verde did not have anybody to go to quickly. He saw Hayes come free, and Jimmy Johnson's Hurricanes are feeling pressure for one of the few times this season. Oklahoma certainly delivered some in their contest. First and ten for McManus. This is Ross. 
Ross fumbles the ball. Miami recovers. Tolbert Bain recovered the fumble. George Myra Jr. knocked it free. And number 18 gives the Hurricanes field position. It's a pitch sweep right here. Ross has got the ball. Looks like pretty good blocking right there. There's the hit. The ball pops out. It's Carter, number 91, that caused the fumble. Nice job by Carter. Carter and Myra coming together at the ball. Testa Verde has it inside the 25 at the 23-yard line. And so George Myra Jr. is playing extremely well in the early going there against Florida State. Testa Verde communicating with Bratton. He'll throw on first down. Plenty of time this time. Throws low inside the five-yard line. Incomplete intended for Urban. Looks like Urban is hurt. Looks like he hurt his hand. Left wrist. Boy, what an effort that was by Urban. I thought he, he was a sensational attempt. Just a, a quick little turnaround by Vinny. Waits, waits. Now he throws it. He throws the ball low. Right there, oh, the ball definitely hits the ground. No question about that. But Urban made a great attempt at it. Miami yanks Bratton out of the game along with Urban. Bratton was not sure of the last play. Urban injured. So Williams is back. And Brett Perriman is a wide receiver. They ran Highsmith right into the heart of the defense. There was no hole there. Well, they put three receivers out to the side. It looked like they were going to blitz. I think Vinny wanted to give a quick trap in there and pop through there, but the Seminoles were up to it. Good job of defense. Gerald Nichols, the lone returning member of Bobby Bowden's defensive line, is credited with that tackle. This is third and ten era. And a big one for the Seminoles. Bobby Bowden did not want this to happen. He felt that if he could just keep error free, that he could do a job on the Hurricanes, but he can't make these kind of mistakes. He'd love to force him to a field goal here. Festiverde rolling to the left. Receivers are covered. Coming back the other way. Throws to the end zone. Kosar. You know what kind of a t-shirt Vinny Testaverde wears at practice and underneath that game jersey? It says Downtown Athletic Club. <laughs> That's the club that gives the Heisman broken. Highsmith could be another first round draft choice from this team. He can block, he can run, and you just saw him catch passes. Ball teed up for ceiling. And Florida State will go back to work. Danny McManus, who has looked impressive here so far as a quarterback, must come from behind this time. Here is Ross. He fumbled on that sweep five yards deep. He's coming out. There's that famous lateral of Florida State oh, across field, and they've got an alley. He could go the distance. Dexter Carter is free. Oh, boy. The Seminoles have had that play for years. You asked Bobby about it yesterday, and he said maybe.
of Oklahoma, someone's made another mistake. When he got to the 15 and put that arm in the air, I said, what in the world is he doing now? And then it dawned on me. <laughs> you and I were thinking exactly the same one. A 100-yard return is Schmidt's extra point. Let's take another look. about five yards in the end zone. He's got a good pocket there, good protection. Now he turns and throws the ball to Dexter Carter. And look at this wall he has. Once he hits that sideline, you can see it from up here, that no one was going to catch him. <laughs> hey. Well, we've seen, you know, two plays I back to say, back, you know? This is like a schoolyard yeah, right. game, and I love it. <laughs> oh, 100-yard return. Dexter Carter. Well, let's see. Ross has fumbled. Then he tested a already burned Florida State. But now, Ross comes up with a big play for Bobby Bowden. And he's a man respected in the college fraternity. He's got a hundred. As being a big game coach, he can beat you on an afternoon like this. He's taking his team on the road and beating all the big ones up. He's got 160 wins. Nobody will go to Tallahassee and play. <laughs> <laughs> He's beaten, beaten all the biggies on the road. They don't want to see that Indian come out there on war paint and <laughs> throw that at the 50 and that crowd go crazy up there. Smith's kickoff. J.C. Penny. He slips short of the 20. And there's a big one to the Big Ten today. State and Iowa. Jim Nance, what's going on with that one? Well, Brent, as you know, it's not easy to play at Iowa City either. Now, the Hawkeyes here blitzing on Jim Carsados. His pass blocked by Tyrone Taylor. Caught in the air by Kerry Burt, who returns it for the touchdown. And Iowa is up early. Let's go back to Brenton era. I'm surprised that Hayden Fry's got enough healthy bodies. I keep reading the paper about that ambulance pulling up at Iowa. He strikes first. We'll keep you up to date on that one. Here it is, 14-all, and it has been wild and woolly so far. Testaverde straight back, plenty of time. Complete to Urban, hammered at the 39-yard line by Dion Sanders. Boy, did he hum that ball in there. He has got some kind of arm. He had wonderful protection. Irvin just came down the field, broke over the middle. Tolbert Bain drove off deep. Can't quite see it here. You see the tight end Henry breaking. Now watch this ball come right in between, beyond the linebackers. Sanders comes in and makes the play, but that ball got there quick. We're in the first quarter, and we've had four touchdowns scored here in the Orange Bowl. Best of hurting, calling the play up at the line, and Highsmith moving Williams over. And there was confusion, and Testaverde uses one of the three hurricane timeouts here in the first half. Let's go down to the sideline while we've got an opportunity and check in with John Dockery. John? Thank you, Brenton. You just saw Michael Irvin catch that pass from, uh, from Vinny Testaverde. Before the last touchdown, remember, he hurt his hand. He came off the field. They were trying to put ice on it. Vinny threw the touchdown, and before they could get the ice on Irvin's hand, he ran out to greet Vinny, and then he kept the ice on the old injury for a little while. Nothing serious. And he's back in the game. They expect to play. No side effects. Now back to you. All right, John, so far, with your blimp overhead here in the Orange Bowl. Taking a shot of our scene here this afternoon. That's the airship Enterprise from Pompano Beach, Florida. And down here on the good mother earth then he tested already is seven of nine for 85 yards and one touchdown era i guess from a defensive standpoint they need to get more pressure on Testaverde, but because he sends so many people out as receivers, it's dangerous to blitz. I don't know how you can defensive. You just got to try to slow him down as the best you can do. They run Williams to the 45-yard line. And that was Steve Gabard, the defensive tackle, wrapping him up. Bobby Bowden would be very happy if he saw a lot of those running plays because... This Miami team can score quickly. They've got tremendously skilled receivers. They've got a great concept and scheme in their passing attack. 
They take advantage of what you give them. Tough to even slow down. Second and four. There the rush breaks free. Testaverde sacked for the second time. And it was Shelton Thompson, a backup outside linebacker, number 93, from Lakeland, Florida. All the sacks for this Seminole team come from that spot between Warren and Thompson, which is their rush backer, outside backer. And he got in there and did the job. That position has had seven sacks, uh, Brent. It's an 18-yard loss leaving Testaverde and Miami with a third and 22. Brian Blades and Michael Irvin are to the left. Brett Perriman is to the right, and we've run out of time here in the first quarter. Four touchdowns posted in the first 15 minutes. 14 all. We'll be right back after this message and a word from your local stations. It's been a long day, big boy. Feel like you still got something left? Sure you do. You've got energy from 100% whole wheat. Yeah, Wheaties energy. Hello, milk. Turn it on. Wheaties keeps you keeping it on. All tilled all out good whole wheat. Now go tell your mama what the big boys eat. It's a Radio Shack Merry Christmas. Meet our family's newest member. Our new high-performance Tandy 1000 EX. PC compatible and now at an incredible $799. Including a Christmas bonus color monitor. We saved $300. And it came with DeskMate software like word processing, budgeting, filing, and more. Of course, all work and no play. Makes a dull computer. <clears throat> right. The Tandy 1000 EX computer, just $799. Only at Radio Shack. This is CBS. When you race Porsches, you have to know them inside and out. And when you sell a fine line of German automobiles like this, you have to have trained technicians that know them inside and out. At Braun Motor Car Company, our goal is 100% customer satisfaction. That means right parts and trained technicians meeting the customer's needs on time. Right down to the last detail. Oktoberfest sale ends this weekend. Yo, Samson! Lunch. I need a burger like I need another haircut. Tired of the same routine? Introducing the new Double Beef Burrito Supreme from Taco Bell. It's got twice as much beef as our regular Burrito Supreme for a bigger, beefier taste. Whoa! Where can I get another one? They're new in Taco Bell. Great! I'm out of here! New Double Beef Burrito Supreme, only at Taco Bell, the cure for the common meal. This is a live weather radar picture from WCTV, Thomasville, Tallahassee. For Benny Testaverde, fortunate that they had last week off. He injured his foot in that game against Cincinnati. And it concerns the Hurricanes as to his mobility here this afternoon. Straight back drop, running out of pressure, and he is taken down for the third time here this afternoon. And that was the nose man, Thomas Hart, number 58, bringing him in on Testaverde. So the pass rush doing the job. Watch Harp fight off the man and then make the stop on Testaverde right there. Good coverage that time, Brent. And he was down, shaken up. Now he is wearing a special guard on that injured right foot. And you can see him favoring it a touch as he comes to the sideline. So there is something to the fact that he is slowed up today. One high top and one low cut shoe and a special protective pad over the instep. Fiegels booms a punt to Sanders. Fields it at the 30. Looking for an alley. The kicking game 
gives the Seminoles field position inside the 40-yard line. Bullington brought him down, and Bullington might have saved a touchdown. That was a 44-yard punt with a 30-yard return by Sanders. Well, Bobby Bowden says Deion Sanders is the best athlete on the football team. He's got the speed. He could be a wide receiver or running back and certainly demonstrates that. on. Look at him make the moves in here. Picks the daylight perfectly. Comes to the wall. Gets the corner turn. Watch him make this little move here. Try to fake out the defender. Look at this. At the ball like a loaf of bread. I thought he was going to pass it left hand. <laughs> First and 10, McManus using Victor Floyd for the first time. Now there's a story, number 27 checks in for the first time this afternoon. He is the starting tailback for this team, but did not start this game because he was injured. Sammy Smith was knocked out of action early on with a shoulder injury, and the third string tailback, Keith Ross, tried to carry the load, and he fumbled to set up a Miami touchdown. Now it will be Floyd, and this is a second and nine for the Noles. Complete to the 35-yard line. McManus hits Floyd coming out of the backfield, and McCutcheon makes the stop. Let's go down to John Dockery for a report on Vinny. John? Thank you, Brent. You see Vinny behind me. They're looking at his right foot, the same one you were talking about, with the pad on top of the instep. Apparently, he just sprained it when he was tackled, but he's okay. He was just on the phone with the offensive coordinator. They say he'll be back. Gary Stevens, the offensive coordinator upstairs on the telephone. Split backs, McManus throws complete to the 30-yard line. Coming back to O'Malley, his tight end. Boy, this is a well-conceived offensive game plan by Bobby Bowden. We haven't seen Oklahoma or anybody move the ball on the Canes like this. You see O'Malley just comes right into the seam right there. McManus puts it right in his hands, but he's just short. To come up with fourth down and a foot. That is the backup quarterback, Jeff Toretta, throwing on the sideline just in case Jimmy Johnson needs it. This is fourth and inches. down to the 25-yard line. Williams, number 49, carries the ball for Florida State. He had come off the bench. That's Dane Williams out of Fruitland Park, Florida. He's 6'1", 225, and a sophomore. He's carried the ball 17 times for 89 yards, which is a 5'2 average. He's a strong runner, a power runner, and that's what he's put in there on that fourth and short. Floyd still at tailback. Williams stays in at fullback. McManus to throw. Holloman, it's incomplete. Great coverage by Bain, number 18, Tolbert Bain, coming over, and he ripped Darren Holloman down. Great job by Tolbert. Had a lot of coverage there. Watch him move to the ball as it's in the air. Right there, knocks that ball free before Holloman can get it. This is second and ten. McManus waiting for the play to come in from the sideline. Well, Brent, I've been impressed with McManus. He's got a quick release, he's got a good arm, and he's been very accurate. Well, Bowden says the kids respond well to his leadership. We've got a timeout. So far, McManus is 7 of 13 for 80 yards. We'll be right back. Come ride with me and I'll take you where you've never been before. Ride with me and I'll show you that there's really so much more. There's a place you'll never know. Come on down, don't miss the show. Ride, ride with me and I'll show you a man. On a Honda ATV, the end of the road is just the beginning. Introducing Kodakolor VRG Film. Life comes in many shapes and colors. Every moment is a rising sun. Life is when you let the spirit move you. And that's what makes the whole world fun. Don't you know? 
most accurate, realistic color and print film is here. Coda Color VRG. Kareem and the Lakers go out for revenge against the team that stunned them into playoff submission. The towering Rockets of Houston. The rematch on CBS Sports. Next. Well, Aaron and I will be participating in a 16-year tradition later. We'll select a Chevrolet most valuable player of the game from each of these schools. And Chevrolet will donate a $1,000 scholarship to the General Scholarship Fund of both Miami and Florida State. Florida State and Miami are tied at 14. We have 11.56 to go in the first half. This is second and 10 for Florida State. They have the ball at the Miami 25-yard line. Deflected and caught by Floyd, and then he drops it, and it goes out of bounds. Greg Mark, number 94, got a hand on the ball. That was a dangerous throw. There were a lot of defenders in the area. Just a quick little, just takes two, two steps and a drop, and there's the throw. As he comes out, look, the ball is deflected. Very fortunately, he catches the ball. McManus is not very tall, and he could have a lot of balls knocked down. The one man they have to be concerned with is number 98, Jerome Brown. And Jason Kuypers knocked his helmet off that time. He took it to the big fellow a little bit, didn't he? The big fellow will be back. It's third and six, and Floyd runs to the 20-yard line. That will leave them about five yards short of the first down. Greg Mark wraps him up, and you would think that Schmidt would come onto the field, and he is. Florida State will attempt a field goal. Brent, that was a great play by Greg Mark because he came from the right end position. Otherwise, that was going to be a positive yardage play. But he closed down and shut it off. It's going to force his field goal. So coming up at the half, the Prudential College Football Report. We'll have all the scores and highlights with Jim Nance. Here is Schmidt. He'll be set to attempt a field goal. He... 17-14 with 11 minutes to go. Bobby Bowden continuing to do the job here against the number one ranked team in the country. We'll be right back. go with Napa, you go with confidence because every Napa brand part is backed by the Napa National Warranty Program, the most extensive parts warranty program available. There's even a toll-free number to put you in touch with the nearest Napa Auto Parts store. So make sure it's Napa because Napa keeps you going wherever you go. Who says you can't have old world taste and a new world waste? Old world aging and the new world's youthful spirit. Europe's finest hops in America's finest light beer. Michelob Light, old world quality from Anheuser-Busch. Michelob Light, the best of both worlds. Michelob Light, oh yes you can have it all. Being grown-up is more complicated than playing grown-up. That's why Nationwide Insurance has simplified financial planning with our universal life policy. It's a new generation of life insurance that gives you competitive interest rates plus tax advantages and is flexible enough to change as your life changes to give you the kind of blanket protection you need throughout your life. for the Seminoles. They lead it 17-14. J.C. Penny from the five. Oh. There's an alley. Oh, what a save. Great tackle. Touchdown saving tackle by number 28 of Florida State. Dedrick Dodge brought him down. Era, let's go back because Miami could have scored defensively here. Number 94, Greg Mark. I said it was a dangerous throw. Watches McManus releases the ball and Greg will be right there. He would have been off to the races. Look at here. Right in his hands, comes right out of his hands. Floyd catches it, but it was a very dangerous throw. And Testaverde returning to the game. But that right foot, injured in step, becoming a problem for them. They run on first down into the heart of the Seminole defense. 
and John Eford and Odell Haggins, 52 and 53 backup linebackers, make the stop. And that is Sammy Smith, who was injured on the first series of the game. They have put the pads back on. He's obviously going to play with a little pain. You could tell by the wince. This is second and seven for the Canes. And Williams will go nowhere. Steve Gabbard, 76. He was the first man in. Era, the defense is playing better for the Seminoles. Right. Also, it's an indication that they don't want Testaverde throwing all the time. They're probably trying to get the ball on the ground. And you can see the defense just swarm in on Williams, number 24. And I would think that it'll be interesting to see how well Testaverde scrambles because they have a passing down play here. Florida State substituting four and five men a play because of the intense heat here this afternoon. On third down, Testaverde over the middle, and he just threw the ball out of the grasp of Williams, who had released and was wide open. And Vinny knows he should have hit him. And the defense was the double zone that I had talked about at the top of the show. Man-to-man -man coverage underneath with two deep, and he breaks away from his receiver. This is one of the few that you'll see Vinny overthrow, but he was he got a lot of pressure right there from Nichols, number 79. Fegels will punt it. McGee snaps it to him. Ooh. And he puts one high, and Sanders signals for the fair catch at the 21-yard line. And a half minutes to go here in the first half. There's a flag down. It was a 40-yard punt. mentioned the snapper, Pagese, for Florida State a couple of times. That's because the regular snapper, Brian Smith, is injured. So Pagese, who normally snaps on extra points and field goals, has been pressed into duty here this afternoon. And they were very concerned. Smith broke a hand in practice two days ago. Pagese was out early, about an hour before game time practicing his snaps with one of the assistant coaches. Looked like Jeff Eagles was putting showtime on that tonight. He made a, a pretty good attempt to indicate that he had been rough, but he wasn't touched. Well, they're going to bring it back, and Pagese will snap it all over again. Now, Arab, Pagese is what they refer to as a true freshman, unlike a red-shirted variety. So this can be huge pressure on a center. And if the defense is aware that the regular has suffered a broken hand, they will line up a couple of men on his nose and make sure that he feels it, hoping that they get a bad snap late in this game. There's the bad snap. Block punt by Florida State. The 10-yard line, it's touched first and then downed at the one-yard line. And the bad snap comes in to haunt them as Alfonso Williams. I'm not sure he can advance it after he first touched the ball there. That's a penalty. He cannot advance the ball. He pushed the ball forward with his hand. It's going to come back. Not the punt, of course. They'll recover the fumble. The infraction was when he used his hand to push the ball forward. He should have picked it up and gone into the end zone. Well, I certainly did not mean to jinx the freshman snapper <laughs> by telling that story. But that is what has concerned Jimmy Johnson for the last 48 hours. And he said, I will do anything to avoid punting. There was very little he could do in that particular situation. He wasn't close enough to gamble on it. And Florida State blocked two punts last year against Miami. Now, there was Fiegel's fielding the ball that was already on the ground. And I mean, Williams just busted through on him. And I'll tell you what this will remind pro fans of. A fellow by the name of Dave Casper with the Oakland Raiders dribbling the ball into the end zone. That's before they changed the rule in the NFL. Illegal in college football. But Florida State will get it there. Just the far side of the 20-yard line. First down for Danny McManus. And the Seminoles playing well. They sure are, but you forgot that uh, Dave Casper was from Notre Dame. Oh, I'm sorry, Aaron. You taught him how to do that, right? right? <laughs> <laughs> oh, he was a good tight end, too. One of the best I ever saw. You know, these two teams have exchanged kick blocks 
Miami has done the job on other teams this year with seven. Florida State had three coming into this game. That's their fourth. And Jimmy Johnson right there, as you pointed out, Brent, was really concerned about the center. They had lost their starting snapper, 